again um, welcome to this session um hi everyone welcome to this session um again we will be continuing our look into the um, python programming um last time in the last lecture we introduced the python programming today i will continue um in my uh, the topics that i will be talking about i mentioned one thing which um, i did not cover uh, during last time so i will plan to cover that plus uh, some more topics for today uh, so last time i uh, talked about um, uh, the the scope scope of variables in python the scope is very similar to what um, uh, we have for tickle um so um um i just wanted to uh, just give you an example so first of all the scope of a variable is limited to the extent of a function so if you are using a particular um, variable that that variable does not go outside the function once you exit out the function uh, that variable is gone pretty much um and the variable outside the function um are not also taken into the function so if you are um changing any variable uh, which is declared outside the function in, in within the function um the um python creates a brand new variable for that even though it's the same name and it just overloads the name and then it assigns the value that uh, you are assigning and once you leave the scope of the function that particular variable is gone and it uses the global variable uh, once again so if you try to change anything within the function and then try to print out outside you will not see any changes it will just be the same as before so here is one quick example um okay, i'm going to pause it for a for a minute okay is limited to the extent of the function um once you change the variables um, um essentially like i mean so any variables um, um outside the function cannot be changed within the function so python usually assigns a new variable of the same name and overloads that name and then uses that um uh, within the scope and then once you go out um again you don't um, see those changes and the same thing so if you want to um, have a variable defined outside and then you want to use it within the function you need to declare that as um, with this global keyword um which is shown here essentially so it's the global keyword um so here is one example this this section is actually a like a python code let's um, review this one so here i am declaring a global variable it's called global var and then it's assigned to a string this is global now i am defining my function where i am defining a local var called and uh, we basically assign this is local to that uh, local var and then global var i'm changing from the this is global to this is local so if i print within the function it will be still the same the global var will be same as this is local and the local var is also the same so that is when i execute this now if i print outside the global var and tell me like i mean what it will print it's still going to print this value as if it never got changed by my function this is again because when you define it here this global var is a different global var it actually creates this variable assigns the local this is local and then it prints out this but once you go out it uses this so in order for us to change the global var within the function we need to declare here like global and then global var so this basically like this statement 
enables uh, Python to actually get through this um, you know, this issue and then actually change that to this is local and that is visible outside the function. So now when you print this one instead of this is global it will print this is local. So that explains the scope of uh, variables or the variable scope. Um, so today we will be uh, uh, continuing our discussions. Um, so just a recap: um, in the um, first lecture, we saw uh, several topics. Basically, um, I just wanted to just run through several of them. I, I hope uh, you remember all these things. We started with like some basic stuff how to run Python programs we talked about variables um, we talked about how to print uh, and then what are the operators in uh, Python uh, some of the band uh, keywords also like that we uh, talked about and then what are the rules for um, um, having a keyword uh, then we talked about how can we input a variable into the um, into the um, in in Python or into the program, and then uh, how to write comments, and then now today we saw the scope. Okay, so I hope uh, those things are very clear for you. Um, now let's go to today's lecture. Basically, we, today we are going to talk about the conditionals. Uh, basically, true or false uh, booleans. Uh, true or false uh, booleans comparison and logical operators and then we are also like going to look at some of these uh, if uh, else if, if statements again remember Python is a shorthand programming language um, we want to minimize and get the most effective um, things in uh, Python. So here the main thing is like the type is what is called the um, uh, main thing basically and um, type bool uh, boolean or boolean um, and then um, we say like type true that is uh, of type boolean. Um, it does not matter like I mean uh, um, if you specify the lowercase t here that is not defined so essentially like that just uh, results in an error so the the booleans are defined as uppercase t r u e and uppercase f a l s e so make sure that you remember the case and uh, use that. And if you specify something like this, two plus two equals equals five. Um, this is a conditional checking, basically whether this is the same, and then the result is a false. So the true or false are of type boolean, and the capitalization is required for booleans. So just uh, remember that. Um, A Boolean expression is an expression which can be evaluated into a true or false. Um, the expression evaluates to false if it is um, um, it's a it's a numerical value of zero. Essentially, like I mean, there are different ones. One is the constant false, the object none, an empty sequence or a collection. Or the numerical item of value zero. Think of this basically like I mean this is the this primary one. You have also the constant false that we saw earlier. The evaluate the boolean expression evaluates to false. Then also it returns a false. The object is none. It again returns a false. It has an empty sequence or a collection. It returns a false. And then finally any numerical value of zero is also like this and also false. And everything else. Other than these four conditions, it's actually it's true for the Boolean expression. 
so let's look at uh, some of the comparison operators. So um, this one we saw in the first example uh, that is equal equal. That's actually um, uh, it is a comparison ex um, to find out whether two things are equal. And then the not equal to is again um, uh, it's a um, easy one. Um, it checks if the two values, two value operands are equal or not. And if the values are not equal, then the condition becomes uh, true. So in other words, um, this one is evaluates to a equal equal b. You can say basically. And then uh, it this basically like whether it checks whether it is uh, true or not, if they are equal or not. Here it's basically like a not equal to b. And if that becomes true, then uh, the thing is true. And then you have a greater than, um, and you have less than basically. And greater than or equal to is another operator, and uh, less than or equal to is another one. Um, then we also have um, the similar kind of operator that we saw in uh, a tickle or even in Perl, which is like a um, board operator. Um, this essentially checks if the value of two operands are equal or not. If the values are not equal, then the condition becomes true. Um, so So in other words um, this is similar to the not equal to anything um, and then we also have something is um, um, the two references refer to the same object this one we will cover in chapter 6 so we talk about more lectures and then we will go through that uh, basically. Um, this is like one level of indirection when you talk about references. Basically, are the addresses the same even though the values need to be. So um, um, that's another thing that uh, you can find out. And um, in Python, actually, uh, one thing that you can do is you can actually chain these comparisons. Um, so you can define like the multiple inequalities, multiple equalities, uh, multiple comparisons in the same line. Again, this goes to that uh, shorthand notation that uh, we talked about. So here, a simple thing basically uh, 0 less than or equal to a less than or equal to 99, and if a is 42, this expression will return. But if A is say minus 10 this evaluates to false even though like this side may be true and if it is A is uh, 100 then also it returns false because this will evaluate true but this side is going to be false. So uh, you can you can actually specify these uh, shortcuts uh, this actually saves a lot of time and a lot of uh, code. Now let's look at some other operators like logical operators. Logical operators are um, and, or, or not essentially. Um, so the and or not. It's essentially like through the real um, typing the numbers, typing the the actual um, uh, words themselves out. So we can specify, say, like two plus two equal equal five, or one plus one equal equal two, 
this will return true because this side is true and uh, essentially like I mean this may be false but false or true is actually true if you say and now false and true that is actually false then you can also specify not of this which means basically like this is now true and then this and this and that becomes true as well. So one thing you note that actually we do not use the ampersand ampersand or bar bar or this bang as in C. So we do not do the C level stuff for using the logical operators they are explicitly specified in the fullest form. Um, so even though we we said basically we won't specify this um, the double uh, um, ampersands and all these things, there will be like single ones that are that are used, which are mostly used for the bitwise operators. So um, we will talk about that in a little later. Now we go to the conditional ones if then else so here just one example called if else dot pi so you can think of you can see this code actually which is 1 plus 1 equal to 2 then print that and then print I always thought so and else print my understanding of the math is not be faulty. And a simple one line add is um, we use this uh, so we notice that actually there is a colon here for both if and uh, else and which is quite important when you specify the if uh, um, um, statement uh, the simple one will be basically like I just one and then I can make an add um, very simple one. So all these cases actually like I mean it evaluates true so the first set gets executed and then the second set is ignored. You see like two things one is I mean of course this column here and then there is an indentation here in the token of these print statements same with else. The indentation is quite important in um, uh, Python. Because the indentation gives it the framework of what is the, the. It's almost similar to a function call or like a function statement. The elif statement. Um, is actually it is very similar to else if in C or ELS IF in um, tickle or um, um, even Perl. So here is a simple one where x equal to equal to 1 then print 1 x equal to equal to 2 else if or ELS print 2 and then else print main. So if it is 2 then this particular thing will catch and then will print So now let us go into um, in the more um, um, the next level. 
So uh, one thing uh, on the ELIF uh, is basically like you can have as many ELIFs as uh, possible uh, in this one that is A first one colon then blah 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 and then ELIF second condition blah 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 uh, row columns and then there, there may be several ELIFs before um, you can actually go to a else so um, this is one thing that uh, you may want to just uh, see basically um, Now uh, Python also supports loops uh, which we will talk about uh, in the next section uh, there are while loop and for loop are supported so we will talk about that. Now let us look at uh, functions again in function uh, we will talk about how do we define function we already saw like some of the, the basic uh, basics of functions. And then we also see how to do the return values, local variables, which we will cover once again the scope. And then some built in functions, some functions of functions, and then how do we pass lists, dictionaries, and keywords and into the function. So let us begin um, the functions uh, basically you define them in a file above the point where they are used so you need to define it before you are using uh, the main reason is uh, Python is an interpretive language so you need to know what it is before you can use it. And um, the body of a function should be intended, intended consistently. So four spaces is typical in Python. So everything like four, we increment. So here we declare a, a function called square, and you can see basically like it's a definition, the function name followed by column, and then we leave four spaces, and then we basically Define the function. So the usage will be you can say like print square of three is and then call the square function square three and then the output will be like square of three is nine. So Couple of things. Uh, one is the def statement, which is essentially the first one, first statement that we specify for a function. How do we define it? The def statement is executed. Basically, it's not like a parsed and uh, thrown away. Basically, it is executed, and that is why we need to define the functions uh, before we can use them. And uh, what happens is when the def gets executed, the def creates an object and assigns a name. To the to reference it, the function could be assigned to another name. The function names uh, can be stored in a list, etc. And we can put a def statement inside an if statement, and uh, it, it can be like a nested and more basically like I mean it, it's all over. Arguments uh, to a function are optional. If you have multiple arguments, you basically separate with um, commas. And if there is no return statement, then none is returned. 
the return values can be simple types or tuples or basically two element array just like the a comma b and when a function returns the values they may be ignored by the caller itself. One thing to note is uh, the functions themselves are typeless that means that um, we can call, call with arguments of any type as long as the operations in the function um, can be applied to those arguments and this is considered as a good thing because uh, now you do not have that dependency of um, the type um, of the argument anymore. Now this is something that we saw earlier um, as I mentioned variables declared in a function do not exist outside the function. So here is one example um, def square n which is m is defined as n square and then return n. So if you say like square of 3 and then if you ask it to print square 3 uh, and then you print m Python will generate this error. So this is the opposite of what we saw in the first slide uh, regarding the scope because this m does not live outside of this function which is these two statements so it does not it cannot actually live outside um, we can capture the value of square 3 because it is returning the m we can capture this as this is another variable called m itself m equals square 9 square 3 and then um, it will be there but uh, this way it, it, even though this can actually this will work this does not work so the file comes up with an error. The variables assigned within a function are local to that function call that we already saw um, and then variables assigned to the top of the module are global to that module uh, there is only global uh, within a module. So this is the use of global to represent the global value of um, the, the variable. So within a function Python will try to match a variable name to one assigned locally within the function if it fails it will try um, within the enclosing function that uh, defining statements that is def if appropriate. If that also fails then it will try to resolve the name in the global scope if none of this match then Python will look through uh, the list of uh, built in names. So what are the built in names uh, that we will see in um, so on the scope essentially like I mean another example here A is 5 C is A plus B and then return C then if you say func 4 what does it return. And then we say print C basically, then it does not return anything, but it basically like prints 4 plus 5 is uh, 9. So within the function, we can still make it print, but once it is outside the function, it becomes non defined. So here is another example uh, A is equal to 5, and then we say like global C and then C is A plus B then return 5. So outside when we say func 4 it is actually now um, gives the result and then if you say like uh, print C then now it is also defined as more it is defined to be 9. 
So this um, global variable actually helps in uh, straightening out some of the deficiencies earlier. And notice that actually the evaluation takes place within the function with um, as this addition and then assigns that to C. So unlike um, other um, um, programming languages like uh, Perl, uh, Python in in Python everything is by reference. But uh, please also note that uh, there are immutable objects that are not changeable. So changes to immutable objects within a function only change what the object name points to, and uh, it does not affect the value itself. And it also does not affect who calls that program. Um, so the immutable objects like integers, strings, tuples, Python acts like a C, um, acts like a C is passed by value. And for mutable objects, that is, uh, example, is lists. Python acts like a C is uh, passed by pointer. In place, uh, in place changes to the mutable object can affect some earlier things. So here are some examples. Uh, one is the pass by reference. Um, here we define the function uh, f1, it's x, and comprises of x and y, and then we just print out uh, uh, one plus uh, one is plus two plus one, and the other one is plus two, and then we just print out all the values. Now we um, take uh, the next function x um, f2 uh, we declare x equal to x times 1 and y 0 is um, y 0 times 2. So this is presumably like an, this is an array function. So now when we ask it to print out basically it prints out 0 and then 2 2. Now we continue basically we make it A equal to 0, B is uh, 1 and 2, uh, again it needs to be an uh, array for it to be used inside. Um, then F1 A B that is what we are going to call, so that returns this value and then uh, actually this is 1 and then it's 21 or uh, 2 and then we say basically like uh, print A B and then it prints this and then we use apply the second function and print A B. It prints zero and two and two. So here we are just passing the reference into the find to the function and then getting back the reference. And multiple values can be returned by a Python program, uh, but usually they happen with packaging into, into a uh, triple or a array. So um, here is a small package, basically one, two, three, x times one, x times two, x times x times three, and then um, if you print the one, two, three program with a value of three, then uh, you get the result as three, six, nine. Because now you can return three values instead of one or two. Now, um, Python has a rich set of uh, built in functions. Um, for example, math.py uh, in your installation, you should be able to see there are several functions available, and uh, they are all pretty much free. Uh, one is the point POW. Um, so um, when we say like POW23, that's basically like uh, stands for power. 
and basically it computes the um, so if you say like I mean this is a and b this computes a to the power of b and abs stands for absolute so this is minus 14 and that becomes 14. And then these are some of the nifty commands to find the maximum or amongst these numbers and then here it outputs as 3 which is the highest integer there. So um, these are some of the fun, fun things to do uh, with Python so I hope um, you will enjoy this. Now a uh, function of a function essentially. Um, So um, here is even is a function basically which is which has x and f and then we do a test basically if um, x is uh, the same as uh, f, f of um, minus x then we return true else we return false and how do we determine this is because we now do a square basically so we are defining another function called square n and then which returns basically just the multiplication and then we also define another one called cube and then that returns um, and n times n times n. So now we, we say okay print even um, to square and then print is even to cube. So the output of these two are the first one is a true and then the second one is a false because you can see basically. So first thing to note is this is one function and basically um, this is the top level function and here essentially all we are saying is basically that if of x is uh, uh, same as f minus x then the true else false. Now when we talk about in square basically we only return uh, an n uh, or n times n and the same thing here so now if you look at this one actually it is a function of a function because you are calling the easy one with an argument two, and then basically also we are calling the square. So in for square you need only one number so basically what happens is um, it knows that okay it is a square and it passes this number into that square computes the answer and 2 becomes x square becomes f and then it is again the easy when it is evaluated with these numbers and then it comes up with this answer. So now some default arguments uh, like in um, C and Java uh, we can define a function to supply the default value for an argument if one is not specified. So these are useful for printing out the error messages and things like that. So here we have a, um, a defined a function called print error and it gets line number and some message um, and the message is error um, already like it is predefined here. So and then we just print basically um, uh, the error message error at line number so and so and then that is the line number. So when we say like print error 42 it just prints basically like error at line number 2. So these are like predefined values that you can supply into the function and um, essentially like I mean that is what we get. So now let us talk about the function without any return value. Um, in general all the functions in Python return something if the return value is uh, not given then by default Python returns none. So this is a principal difference between Python and Tickle as you know 
article actually returns last evaluated expression. So, when you are writing like Python code, beware of assigning a variable to the result of a function which returns none. For example, here the, the list append function changes the list, but it does not return a value. So, when we say basically like okay, a012, and then we say basically a dot append 3 and then that is assigned to B and if you say print B it prints none even though this is executed in correctly and basically like the new list will be like 0, 1, 2, 3 but um, it only prints none so you may assume that okay the now that this, this is correct it should get a value of uh, true but the actual value that you get is just uh, none. So um, this is basically like what I wanted to cover during the, um, this lecture, um, so we talked about several things I hope uh, you remember we talked about the scope of um, the variables, um, we talked about the, um, um, the, The conditionals essentially that's how we started with basically true and true or true and false um, booleans. Um, then we went into like how to compare uh, logical operators, comparison and the logical operators, and then we also talked about if uh, elif and else statement. Uh, then we continued our look into functions. How do we define function? How do we actually execute the function? And then uh, what are the other things associated with it? One of which was the scope, and we went into more depth uh, rather than just mentioned it in passing last time. Um, and then we went into like these um, values, um, the, the 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 various scope examples, um, and then we we talked about uh, how uh, the reference works in Python. And then we saw some examples how do we use multiple values um, from functions um, etc. Okay, so um, thank you once again and uh, we will see you in the next uh, lecture, thanks. Hey Santosh.